Good morning and good afternoon to everyone on the webinar today. Thank you for joining us to learn more about Dynamics 365, the modern ERP for tribal governments and enterprises. With me on the webinar today is our pre-sales solution architect, Matt Borkowski. So with that, I'd like to turn over the presentation to Matt from Arctic IT. All right, well, thank you, Joanne, and, and thank you for everyone who is uh, attending today. I'd like to just start by saying hello. Uh, I know I've met a number of you in person before, and I appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak with you, existing customers and new customers, but I wanted to say hello uh, personally and say welcome, and I'm glad you're joining us for the presentation today on Dynamics 365 and and the work that we're doing with it and how other and tribes and tribal organizations are making great use of that today. So with that, just to help us get an idea of who's in the audience, the organization that you work for and, and where that fits from a government enterprise, gaming enterprise perspective, we're going to just start off with a quick poll that allows us to know how the audience sits in regards to the type of organization they work for. So Joanne is getting that started for us. Okay, who's in the audience? Government, gaming enterprises, or non-gaming enterprises? So we have a, a lead for gaming so far. Let's give it a few more minutes. Okay, that's terrific. So okay. with that, we have 17% of government, 67% gaming enterprises, non-gaming zero, and other 17%. Okay. Well, thank you all for, for, again, for taking the time to join us today. That just allows me to tailor uh, what I talk about a little bit and, and, and how to show some of the, the most beneficial uh, features for the specific audience. So, so thanks again. I'm glad to have a number of you from the government side, but especially from the, the gaming side today. So while we do know some of you, and we, we've had the privilege of working for some of you as, as existing customers, uh, for those of you that are new to Arctic IT and talking with us, we're very glad to have you join us today and, and want to give a little bit of background of who we are and why we're the right organization to speak with you about this. And, and that really comes down to we're not new to this. So even if you're new to working with us, we are an experienced technology solution provider. And, and we really have three strategic goals as a technology provider. One is that, that we are a, a stable, consistent organization that isn't going to go away with changing in technology or anything, that we are with you throughout your use of the technology. And, and we can execute on key deliverables throughout the technology uh, that we implement. So we know that a lot of you have key priorities and our goal is to execute on those and we do that consistently. And not only just to start with the implementation, get that in and say goodbye to remain your strong teammate throughout the life again, while you're using the technology to better your, your, your tribes, casinos and other organizations. Now, Arctic is in our name and that's because we were born in Alaska. That is our, our home, if you will, uh, but we, we are not just an Alaskan company. I myself work out of our Texas office. So sometimes it's interesting down here to have folks talk to me about working at a company called Arctic when I'm down in Texas. But uh, we, we've been privileged to have offices across the country now in Seattle and, and Texas and the other states there where you see uh, those stars, those are our operation centers. Uh, but we currently have customers in 31 states, Washington DC and Canada. And part of the reason why we are you know, headquartered, if you will, in Anchorage, in Alaska, is that we are a subsidiary of the Doyon Limited Alaska Native Corporation. Uh, so similar to most of you, we are tribally owned, Alaska Native owned. We are very proud of that heritage. And, and this is our Doyon board and our, our president and COO who are a guiding force into the stability of the organization, both at a corporate level um, and, and as Arctic IT as the key technology subsidiary of the Doyen Alaska Native Corporation. And you'll hear us talk a lot about Microsoft products. We have been a Microsoft Gold partner going on 16 plus years now, and that requires a lot, it requires a lot of our team to stay up to date on certifications and trainings with, with all the new updates and changes in the technology and to maintain these um, competencies across the board, not just in the specific applications, 
but in the platforms and all the supporting technology behind that as well to make sure that we are that we are the go-to experts in Indian country for Microsoft. When we talk about our experience. Uh, this is our, our CEO and CTO, Dave Bailey, um, here doing some, some climbing exercises up in Anchorage. And we like to say that we've climbed this mountain before. We've been working with organizations like, like you all for, for a number of years. And as we uh, can take that experience in the industry and with a Microsoft platform, and look at how that's changing and, and stay up to date on, on all the newest parts of that technology that we can demonstrate those competencies and every major component of the latest Microsoft technology, including Dynamics 365, which we'll be covering today, Office 365, and the Microsoft Azure platform, which is that backbone secure Microsoft cloud behind Office 365 and Dynamics 365. And so we have deployed these cloud solutions for government, commercial, gaming, and other tribal clients. Uh, we've been uh, grateful for the opportunity to do so and to be considered Microsoft's, again, go-to partner with organizations like yourselves. But our focus for today is the Dynamics 365 ERP itself. And we're having conversations all the time with organizations telling us that they're, they're really outgrowing their accounting system. And so what does that mean? How, how do you know really if you're outgrowing your accounting system? And those, those common side effects, those symptoms of that really come down to you know, legacy systems almost all have some versions of these five key elements. And one of those really starts with the siloed systems. You know, our work with tribal governments is a great example where you have, where, where you have different programs, different you know, grants uh, that are being managed there, all that have their own database, that have tribal member information in it. Uh, and, and they all have their own version of those, uh, of those addresses. Uh, so just providing poor customer service to your membership as they need to go and fill out applications with 10 different departments, change their addresses, and really staying up to date on that. And for leadership to be able to know really what is the cost of the services that we are providing to a member, to their family. Uh, and so when situations like that, you've got that duplicate data in various places. You have manual processes both internally for, for your finance team, for your, your program management team, for your marketing team, but then also for your customers that are having to, to work with different departments and update their information and ask for help individually uh, from different departments and programs. And that leads to insufficient reporting, not being able to see you know, at a consolidated level uh, you know, good analytics and, and true uh, financial reporting on what is the cost at, at a micro level, you know, down to those families, your members, your customers, but then also at a consolidated multi-entity level as well. Um, and all of that leads into security issues. If you've got information in 10 different spreadsheets and databases um, and, and different systems that may or may not be integrating with each other, you know, how are you protecting that? How is that being secured that folks aren't being leaving with that information anywhere? How is it being encrypted? And how do you control access to that? And so with that, you can't just look at the individual accounting application and the system itself. You have to look at the broader platform that addresses all of these things, gives you the ability to do more than simply just uh, implement another accounting system. And so when Microsoft was looking at what, do, what did they do for the next generation of their accounting systems. That is where Dynamics 365 came from. And Microsoft's terminology for this is that D365 really is that integrated cloud platform for Microsoft. So you have your customer relationship management stuff or your, your tribal member relationship management information, your, your ERP, your full operations, financial type systems, as well as your, your marketing field service um, asset management, a lot of things that are typically in different systems are now on one unified platform that allows organizations to realize that digital transformation. I know it's a buzzword that Microsoft loves to throw out, but that true idea of how do we quit doing things in a manual way that provides poor service to our own internal employees as well as to our customers, to our guests, to our tribal members, right? But on the Dynamics 365 platform, there are multiple applications. And the applications are licensed separately, but they are all, now, all on that same platform. And so the ERP applications, which we'll be talking about today, are the finance, supply chain, and business central. 
Um, and then we get into really the, the CRM components or that, that customer member management related stuff, which is in their, their sales marketing, customer slash member management services, field service, project service automation. Those are the uh, those are the applications that are licensed from Microsoft. And on top of those is where we've built our tribal platforms solutions that uses that D365 platform and interfaces well with the finance side uh, to truly give great service and give opportunities for those, for your guests, your customers, and your, and your members there. And then full retail and commerce, including end-to-end -end, you know, food and beverage management options from a, you know, actually replacing Infogenesis with a, with a modern Microsoft application that is all tied into your financial systems, all tied into your, your procurement and inventory systems. So you're not trying to juggle your inventory and your finances across five different point of sales and, and inventory and just really giving it your best guess as to what your inventory valuation is from day to day across all of those different venues. You know, warehouse automation, as part of that, that finance solution and extending that through the retail commerce uh, and the food and beverage hospitality aspects that bring all of that together. And then uh, on, the, on the talent side of things, the HCM side, Microsoft Talent is another application that is part of the D365 platform. And the key component is while these are separate applications, they are on a common data model. So that means if desired and if authorized to do so, you can have you know, one, record, one master record for your customer that is automatically available through all systems. So you're not having to enter duplicate data, make address changes different places. And that's just an example of it. Or vendors, uh, you know, other master records that really are pertinent across the different applications are all part of that common data model. So they're not different systems that you're trying to have to come up with with crazy ways to integrate. Uh, it is all part of that same platform. And it is embedded with Microsoft Office 365 and Power BI, which are two of the most commonly used you know, cloud applications on the, uh, just in the industry today. And all of those function and interface with those right out of the box. And again, it is all on the Microsoft you know, Azure Cloud. But most specifically, and we wanted uh, our goal for today is to highlight the capabilities of the Dynamics 365 ERP applications. And there are two main aspects, uh, two main versions of the Dynamics 365 ERP. The first one, and this is what we've been talking the most about uh, with our customers. Most folks are looking to move to finance and supply chain management. It is still referred to oftentimes as finance and operations, but Microsoft in October uh, for this new fiscal year updated the title to be finance and supply chain management. So if you've heard of FNO or finance and operations, it's the same application. Uh, it's just licensed a little bit differently now and new terminology from Microsoft. So for those that we've been talking with in the past, that's the change of terminology just to alleviate some of that confusion. And this really is that enterprise level ERP. Uh, and while it's new, it's only been out for about two years, it has a ton of functionality that really was based on the previous functionality that was in a solution called Dynamics AX. Microsoft took the, took the best of Dynamics AX, incorporated some of the best of other solutions like Dynamics GP uh, that, uh, that some of you have used in the past and, and made those and redeveloped those, redeployed those to the cloud is what they then called, you know, it is now called finance and supply chain management. So while it is new, it also has that history of great functionality that was developed and used worldwide over the years of Dynamics AX that is now in the Dynamics 365 ERP solution. And it is truly designed for an organization with 50 plus finance and supply chain management users that have complex organizations. And it, you even have a 20 user minimum. So you cannot purchase fewer than 20 users to get started you know, with finance and supply chain management. So it is designed to compete oftentimes with an SAP or an Oracle at the, at the real high level enterprise class solution. And it is full featured application for multi-entity consolidations, including budget planning and reporting. Uh, so you're working across your enterprise. You, you have multiple casino properties or you know, even as we say there at the end, we have customers that are that are managing not only the tribal government, but their casinos, their, their non-gaming, they're non-gaming companies, you know, other restaurants and hotels and things that they own all within one solution where you can have different users that are part of those different uh, lines of business, but you still have the ability to then roll up to control and offer centralized processing if desired, 
but then keep secure and confidential where necessary, uh, but give great you know, top level consolidation elimination options, you know, especially for you know, tribal CFOs, councils, board members, that sort of thing. So they can get more up to date, real time view budget to actuals across the entire enterprise rather than just waiting you know, for each of the different organizations to send those in. So it truly is designed for large casinos and tribes managing their entire enterprise on one ERP. At a smaller scale is, is Microsoft Business Central. And Business Central is, is really that, that small to medium sized business offering from Microsoft that has a lot of its roots based on Dynamics NAV, uh, similar to finance and supply chain management being based on uh, Dynamics AX. And it really is an optimized system for being able to implement pretty quickly, get up and rolling by having really nice optimized financials. It has inventory and distributions and great analytics as part of it. So a true core financial system. But that also offers some really great project management functions, uh, you know, inventory and billing options. It has components to make it a true DCAA compliant government contracting solution. So for, especially in the ANC market, for other you know, tribally owned enterprises that are, that are in the government contracting space, you know, it's a great uh, alternative to Dell Tech or those that are kind of the go-to there. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of traction with them being used well at that point. So it's ideal for, for smaller tribal governments that are on their own system separate from uh, the rest of the enterprises, smaller casinos and economic development corporations. And it's a, it's a very full function solution just not as robust, doesn't offer nearly as many bells and whistles as finance and supply chain management, but is a good SMB offering that we're seeing a lot of good traction with. So because most of the questions that we get um, ha have been around finance and supply chain management, uh, we will focus a little bit more on that uh, for the rest of the uh, rest of the time today, including that will be what we hone in on for the demo here in a little bit. Now, first and foremost, again, it is deployed in the Microsoft Azure platform, which has a security first model. And really what that means is, is, is Microsoft maintains the highest level of, of security certifications, you know, and it is fully used by the federal government in a number of areas. It is considered by many to be the most secure you know, public cloud available. And, and we're very proud of the operations that Microsoft offers with it. And that includes the ability, while well, you've got your own database with the solution, your data isn't getting in, mixed in with anyone else's. It still offers what you'd want from a cloud offering of continuous operations, where the system really never has to go down for updates or maintenance to happen. While there are maintenance windows, they happen no more than once a month and, and oftentimes go months without that. And you can schedule those to happen for updates to be deployed on your tenant and your environment uh, at a time that fits for you but you're on one version. You don't have to worry about these major upgrade projects as you do with legacy systems. You're able to stay up to date. So even when you have customizations or, or extensions as Microsoft calls them, different things that you do to the solution to deploy it, those customizations are, are backwards compatible with these upgrades and it, it has automated regression testing tools to allow updates to almost always be able to be installed within 30 days without any problems. But if you have reasons to delay, Microsoft gives you the option for up to three months to do so. But that one version allows your system to stay up to date while giving you the control through the lifecycle services and maintaining when you want those to be deployed. When is a good time for the system to be down uh, for an hour? Um, if even that, most of the updates don't even require system downtime. Uh, it has terrific financial management capabilities. Obviously, you've got your AR, AP, banking, financial closing, but with a lot of those built on top of, of a solution and platform that gives you automation, gives you great internal controls, you know, workflow processing, uh, being able to interface throughout the application very easily from a, a analytics and reporting standpoints, and giving those high-end consolidations and simple year-end processing. You know, open POs at the end of the year, open uh, commitments and encumbrances. Those can easily be rolled forward into the new new fiscal year as part of new budgets or maintaining as budget rollovers. Lots of great options for, for simple year and processing and, and you know, moving from one fiscal year to another. Um, again, full of process automation and workflow capabilities, which we'll see a part of in a little bit. And being on the Microsoft platform uh, gives you more than even just what's in the application itself. Being part of the Azure platform and Office 365 gives you the ability to use tools like Microsoft Flow. So your workflows 
don't even have to start in the application. It can start with an email that gets sent into something in SharePoint or another application that folks are using and entering data in. And the endpoint is a transaction inside of your financial system. It's just a lot of capabilities that, that give you ways of doing cool things uh, on a new platform that in the past wouldn't even thought of being possible because everything was locked inside of a single application. Right. Uh, but full you know, procurement sales production, meaning getting into uh, manufacturing type capabilities and you know, talking about the end-to-end -end food and beverage capabilities. That you know, If you have production kitchens, the ability to set recipes that are being mass produced maybe in a, in a production kitchen, then getting sent over to fulfill those orders to the individual venues uh, for large scale orders, things like that, you know, all the soup for the day, that sort of thing uh, that is being centrally managed, but also traditional manufacturing from the aspect of, of controlling uh, we've got a customer that is using it to, to help manage some of their uh, wood pellet manufacturing, other things like that. True manufacturing based system where you can do all your planning, your your equipment maintenance, all that stuff all inside of one application. Um, and of course on that requires your very robust inventory and warehouse management capabilities. And we talked about the end-to-end -end food and beverage capabilities already, uh, but even the capabilities for having your kiosks, your self-service kiosks, it, you know, in some of your fast service type places for customers to place their orders right there. Uh, you're having web and mobile apps available for your customers and guests to to place orders for pickup, you know, at, at maybe a food court in in one of your venues. Uh, lots of options for how that all comes together with that retail and commerce capabilities that are available with Dynamics 365. And then that integration platform, because we know that you're all still going to have your, your core casino floor systems or, or other systems that are being used. So being able to have those full fe featured API and integration tools uh, that common data services, part of the Microsoft Power Platform so that we can integrate the key information, the operational data from other systems that you have to bring in so uh, to eliminate a lot of those manual revenue tasks and all a lot of the auditing things that you have is just trying to consolidate information from multiple systems. And again, it integrates fully with the Office 365 application. You do not have to be using Office 365 to use Dynamics 365, but if you are, it's seamlessly integrated, allows you to do a lot of cool, powerful things. So again, beyond some of the things that we just talked about, we have the ability also with Dynamics 365 to include that key project management, including going all the way to government contracting type capabilities, the purchasing automation. You don't need a separate system for, for doing things like requisitions, uh, receiving you know, POs all the way through um, invoicing, you know, payment management, all that kind of stuff. And not only on the casino side, are, are there options in Dynamics 365 for your know, customer accounts receivable sort of stuff, but even the player host management to be able to interface with your uh, with your loyalty point systems that are on the floors, bring that information in. So it's at, their, at your fingertips for your player hosts. So they can see where are our top players? Where are they right now? Let me go talk with them, make sure they have what they need, offer them some comps, those sorts of things. Uh, to really take that information that is in multiple places, bring it together to give to give your your hosts, your player hosts and, and other marketing folks things on there, the ability to, to offer great loyalty and service to your top customers. Um, and again, reporting analytics, you base primarily with uh, with Power BI embedded within the solution, and then the inventory and warehouse management capabilities. Now we talked about you know, some of the functions in there, but how do you use those? And I mentioned earlier the idea of an app a little bit for your customers, uh, but being a, a secure cloud-based platform, it gives you the abilities to use Dynamics 365 wherever you are. So obviously at your desk via web browser, it is a browser agnostic solution. So it works with, uh, it works with uh, your Microsoft Edge as you would expect, right? But also Firefox works with Safari, it works with uh, Chrome. So your favorite browsers all work as it is a full HTML, HTML5 solution. Uh, but there are full apps as well. So beyond accessing it, maybe the web version of it via any device, um, you can also use a, an app on Windows, iOS, or Android for accessing the most key functions inside the system via the app. So approving transactions, maybe submitting some new requests, expense reimbursements, things that you really need the ability to do on the go. Look at your, your dashboards, run some financials, all within the app while still having that, that 
full security as being connected via multi-factor authentication via the Azure Active Directory capabilities. And being able to manage information right from within Office 365. So I mentioned earlier that you don't have to be using Office 365 for D365, but if you are, there are capabilities of you write from inside Excel, just publishing information, uh, quick, easy, simple integrations with the solution. Uh, that works with traditional Excel as well, but for things like Microsoft Office uh, in Outlook and those things, being able to look up vendor and customer information right from inside Outlook, not having to switch into the system because it is using that same Azure Active Directory login so while you're in Outlook, it knows if you're an authorized user of Dynamics 365 and what your role is. So it knows what information you are authorized to see uh, without even having to leave Outlook. So it makes the information that much more usable across the Microsoft stack. And speaking of that stack, we talked about Office 365 and Power BI really being kind of the, the industry leader in dashboarding analytics um, and data visualizations and all that becomes automatically available to use with your Dynamics 365 information. And that, that Microsoft Flow and Power Apps are, are easy tools that allow you to build your own workflows, allows you to build your own apps that interface with Dynamics 365 without having to do a single line of programming. You know, great wizard driven stuff, drag and drop type tools that allow you to, to, to build the apps and workflows that are usable outside of the system as well that are interfacing with Dynamics 365. And because a lot of you that have used Dynamics in the past know that there are some great third-party solutions out there uh, to extend the system to give you more functionality, that still exists. So there is a full Dynamics app store from Microsoft that, that uh, other vendors have created apps uh, that are available to extend Dynamics 365 and some of those are your same existing ISVs that you might be using if you're a current Dynamics GP or Dynamics AX user, that a lot of those are also available in Dynamics 365. So you can keep some of that great functionality that you're used to with some of your favorite ISVs. Now, when we specifically look at the, at the industries in which we work, some key functions here just very quickly to talk about that Dynamics 365 offers on the accounting side. You know, obviously financial reporting, but getting into the budgeting and consolidations. You don't have to have separate budgeting solutions and then interface that in. While, there, while you can still do that, of course, there's great budget planning functionality and consolidation forecasting functionality available inside the system. We'll see a little bit of that um, in a bit. Uh, full expense management, procurement to payment, we've talked about already. But then some of the other aspects, like grant and contract management. You know, what grants are funding our projects? How are those projects going? Full project management related to those grants to give you some great outcomes-based reporting for your granting agencies. You know, inventory and asset management, we've already talked about a little bit. But then tribal administration, you know, extending that Dynamics 365 with your know, tribal platforms for member management, family services, education, the family wellness, a lot of, a lot of key functions that, uh, that you are working with your tribal members all in separate systems. So bringing that into a unified platform uh, to make the information that much more valuable while still confidential and secure to, to give you much more value across your entire organization with the technology that you're using. And of course, being able to roll that information up into, into dashboards for tribal council and other key executives there. We get into the enterprise and casino side of things. A lot of the same capabilities are available, just used in different ways. You know, we get into the vendor licensing aspect, being able to use D365 to manage those vendor licensing. You know, do, are they class one, class two? You know, what sort of aspects do we need from our vendors? When does that expire? How do we stay up to date and manage all that? Have they paid you know, for the gaming licenses, all that stuff? And being able to take that business intelligence a step further in regards to you know, looking at all of our food and beverage information, menu management, you know, table management, all that kind of stuff, but then extending that back over into your inventory and financial side, really having that core business intelligence capabilities across all of that, where you're typically having that in five or six different systems that makes it hard to bring that together for, for true intelligence there. Um, and then some of the way the function, the, the system is configured from a dimensional reporting standpoint, gives you the ability to maybe reduce the complexity of your chart of accounts and use dimensions for tracking, you know, just different gaming transactions, both statistical information and the financial information. 
And we, we have already talked about that end-to-end -end, you know, F and B capabilities, but then being able to integrate with your exter external systems. You know, if you're using Opera or other things on the, on the hotel side, being able to easily integrate that information in, track your AR, those things. So again, you're not juggling a bunch of different systems or having to spend so much time in you know, revenue audits and spreadsheets uh, before coming up with what those figures are, really being able to, to do more of that inside the application. All right, uh, so I've said a lot you know, as we've dove through this for the last half an hour. So it gives us about 20 minutes here that we can spend some time inside actually seeing what the application looks like, giving you a good feel for the uh, your look and feel of the application and the functions that, that are available inside, uh, and then leave some time for uh, some wrap up and Q&A at the end. So with that, I'm going to switch over what I'm doing now is I am essentially logging into Dynamics 365. Now you will notice that it didn't ask me for a username and password. And part of that again is because of the fact that it is using the Microsoft Azure Active Directory. So most likely everyone on this call already has an Active Directory in use at your organization. And that is the account that allows you to access your email, log on to your computer when you get into work. If you have to put in that username and password to get your work email on your phones, that sort of thing. That same account is what grants you access into the system. On the administration side, your Active Directory account is given a license, you're assigned to a role into the system, then you're able to go and use the application. And because of that, it has all of the great features that Microsoft already offers from, from multi-factor authentication, from roles-based security, groups, um, other workflows and, and aspects for encryption inside of Active Directory already now are part of your financial system as well. You're not having to juggle your multiple accounts, usernames, passwords, and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So once you're in, uh, what we have on our main home screen here, which is tailored to me. Now I see a lot because I'm a system administrator and my setup of the demo environment, obviously I have access to everything. An individual user that logs in would only see the functions that they have access to. And so we start with these larger buttons that we have on the home screen. Those are called work, workspaces. And those workspaces really are designed to give you the ability to, to easily personalize those, to give you the most commonly used functions. And these flow very well into the, the mobile usage, you know, the tablet usage and all that stuff. So you can get to the most commonly used things, your most frequently needed reports and information on the go very easily. So as an example, I can go into bank management. A bank management is going to bring me to my uh, to my main bank management workspace, and on this it has the functions that I've said are most important to me. So maybe I'm in charge of the the bank reconciliations, and I want to start by importing my bank statement from the bank and have it auto clear all of my clear transactions to get started with, and then move forward with any other open bank reconciliations that I have open right from here. Over on the right, you. My daily cash reporting is something that I've said is very important in my role. So I can come in here and look at my, my different key bank accounts. I go to my operating account, pick my time frame. Now I've got the, those dashboards kind of graphs and reports available here as well. So it's giving me a day by day, or, or in this case, a week by week balance update that I have on, on, the, on the report that I've set. And, but these aren't just static reports. Sometimes we're used to with graphs and, and, and other dashboards in other financial solutions. So in this, for instance, I could see you know, where did this big drop come from on this day? By clicking on that, it's going to bring me to those to the transactions from that day, and I can I can start looking through everything that posted here. I see uh, deposits. I see the large deposit from the day before, which is why we had that big uptick. But now I see all the all the checks that posted that day. For instance, here's this check for sixty six thousand. Obviously, that had a big update on our bank balance. Where did that come from? Right, so I can go ahead then and take a look at extra information about that check. Okay, here's the check number, the date, uh, you know, who's the vendor that it went to. By now, I just have the ID showing. You can show the name, depending. This is all easily personalized to give more information. I'm just going up to options, personalize this form, and those that are authorized can do this really anywhere in the system. And I can say, you know, I want to you know, add new fields, add new columns, all those things right from inside excuse me, inside the application here uh, to give me more reports, more information. But I want to know more than just the check. I want to know what 
paid those? Why was it $67,000? Now by clicking on that, I can see the individual invoices that were paid. I could continue to drill down to see the detail behind those invoices, you know, all the general ledger transactions behind that. Again, just by starting with that simple graph on my bank management home screen, I was able to go through and see the key information that I wanted. And again, the system is designed as a modern application. So while I can come up here and print a version of these transactions, a lot of legacy systems were based on fitting all the information that you want into an eight and a half by 11 sheet because people are always printing them out. But now in a modern workplace, more and more often folks have two or three monitors and they're using systems across and they're, they're using the information on screen and they're much less likely to print it out any more than you used to. Now, while you still can do that, the system is, is definitely designed to help folks that are working in a modern environment really take advantage of that technology. So a lot of the reports give you that key drill down information from, from a truly interactive perspective rather than just being printed lists of information. And another piece is that I, I said I wanted here on my bank management workspace, you know, starting a bank transfer, other bank transactions, maybe bridging transactions to other entities, things like that, other analytics and dashboards that I want to see regarding banking. Uh, it's just an example of how a workspace works. So you can see with a lot of the big buttons and the usage of this, it works very well in touchscreen environments, tablets and all that. So some of your key users, you know, your key executives that want access to your, to your cash balances, to see those dashboards, all those things, can easily have that on a tablet, on a phone, as they're going using, using that more modern interface. Uh, but we also have the ability to, to navigate, and oftentimes you will navigate from a more traditional method of going to the, uh, going in and using the modules. Now that's all available on the left here and what, and now granted I'm a big, I, I, I love food. So a lot of my analogies, I use food. So we've got what I call the waffle up here and the hamburger down below. By clicking on the waffle, it allows me to see the other uh, Office 365 and Dynamics 365 applications I'm licensed for. So if I'm switching back and forth to maybe tribal platforms or our, or our customer relationship management, customer service system, all that kind of stuff, because it's the same user on the same platform, I can simply launch those applications by coming up to the waffle, right? Or by clicking on the hamburger, it's going to show me what I have access to inside the application I'm currently in. In this case, is finance and operation. So here I've got my favorite uh, forms, reports, your windows inside the system that you know, anytime I'm in one of those, I can add it to my favorites. And we also have that list of workspaces, just like I see out here, I have them available in a list form under my workspaces here. Recent is really handy, especially when you're using a web-based you know, platform where, where you're going back and forth very easily, maybe with different tabs. It keeps a list of where you just were. So you could easily go back to a most recently used functions. But then we have the more traditional aspect of modules. So while I was in the bank management workspace earlier, I could click on the cash and bank management module. It's gonna show me all my options for for you know, setting up bank accounts, doing my bank reconciliations. Yeah, I can access that same workspace from here and add that to my favorites by clicking the star next to it. But all the you know, positive pay, periodic tasks for creating pre-notes for EFT type stuff, uh, your know, configuration options, your different reports, gives you more of that traditional palette for uh, accessing all the functions within that module or related in this case to cash and bank management. So obviously with the time we have today, just as a brief overview, we're not going to be able to go through all of the modules, but I want you to see just kind of the breadth of functionality that's here, just as soon as you start up your subscription. Obviously you've got accounts payable, accounts receivable, audit workbench to really be able to track any change made in the system. Who changed it? You know, what was it before? What was the record after? When was the change made? To give you that true you know, database auditing behind the scenes. But then also more of your traditional accounting audits for who posted a transaction, who approved it, how did that, um, how did that information flow through the system to hit the general ledger. So you've got the, the database audit capabilities as well as that accounting sort of transactional audit capabilities in the system. Budgeting, we'll talk more in a little bit. You're getting into those high level consolidations. Then cost accounting, cost management, you know, and going down to the production control and that stuff, truly coming up with if you are manufacturing or producing items, materials that are being sold, you know, either on menus from a food and beverage perspective or in, in a true traditional warehouse and manufacturing environment, to 
to really account for the costs of all that, accurately be able to roll those up and give you controls and formulas for how those costs are calculated and maybe charged back to the venues from a production kitchen and all that stuff. Uh, expense management, travel requisitions through to expense reimbursements for you know, when they come back from travel or other things, all integrated with the app for being able to fill those out on the go. You take pictures of your receipts, that sort of thing. Um, and also cash advances if you pay out per diem, maybe before trips, that sort of thing. Uh, fixed assets, as you would expect. Fleet management gives you the ability to you know, have folks maybe reserve vehicles before you know, corporate vehicles, company vehicles before going on trips. You see who's got them, when, what is our maintenance schedule like, all that kind of stuff. The human resources and payroll capabilities, while there is some core functionality available in here, Microsoft has made an announcement that, you, uh, that they are going to more of a best of breed solution and is working very hard at integrating with some of the best you know, HR and payroll solutions on the market as more and more folks are going to a separate HR and payroll so solution that gives them that best of breed functionality. So while we do have some great talent in HR and payroll functionality in D365, most of our customers were recommending migrating because Microsoft will not be supporting those payroll functions for the long term as they're helping folks integrate with, their, with the best of breed solutions that are out there. Um, inventory management, warehouse management, we've already spent some good time talking about that. Your organizational administration, the ability to centrally for someone who is authorized to do so, look at the overall organizational structure for all the different enterprises, businesses, those things that are set up, which businesses can do business with each other. Eliminating those entries from a consolidating perspective, as well as automating some of the intercompany type stuff, if you if you are doing centralized accounting across those entities. So a lot of a, a very robust you know, organizational administration functionality in the system. Your procurement and sourcing to be able to go all the way from a requisition to making the payments to your vendors. And uh, we talked about production control, retail, and things a little bit. Project management and accounting, including grant management and everything that's there. And just some other aspects, sales and service, service management, warehouse management, vendor collaboration for a portal for submitting RFQs, RFPs, uh, for vendors to submit their invoices to you. Just a lot of great functionality throughout. Obviously, with interest in, in future more personalized demonstrations, we'd be able to really dive into that functionality individually with your organizations. But a couple of other key, uh, just real neat features before we go back and finalize out with a Q&A. With a modern application, Microsoft understands that most people, when they're looking things up, they don't first go to a manual to try to find information. Most of the time they're Googling, you know, how do I do this? So they're going to YouTube to watch a video on how to do that. So Microsoft has kind of taken that a step further and, and has what's called a task recorder in the system. And it's a, it's a big part of how we help deliver training and help you record the most commonly performed functions in the system to make you know, cross training a lot easier, helping your new employees uh, come on board and, and ramp up a lot easier. And it's what we call a task recorder. So just as a brief way of showing what that looks like, I'm gonna play a guide so you can see how this can, can really facilitate not only training um, and you know, how to's, but also for things like uh, testing and stuff in, for new, new functionality that comes out. So if I say, yes, I want to uh, open this trial balance, this is a, just a recording that Microsoft makes available. There's a whole library of these that are available. You can create your own. We help create your custom ones during implementations. When I start this task guide, it'll tell me what to do, where to go, and how to do it. So it starts by saying, you go to General Ledger, Inquiries and Reports. So if I go to General Ledger, I look at Inquiries and Reports and Trial Balance, just as it says there. And it recognizes when you're there and then guides you to the next step. So it's saying, look, if you're gonna run a trial balance, first thing you need to do is pick your date range, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just, if this was set for the first two quarters of the year, maybe I'll go back and say, I just want this for the first quarter. Then we've got the dimension sets. These dimension sets go down to how is your chart of accounts organized? And how do you wanna roll up? How do you wanna, what sort of hierarchy do you want? So in this case, from a government aspect, I want to run a, run a trial balance that says, you show me balances by fund program and the account. Uh, but you can flip that around and say, show me balances just by program and account, or all rolled up to fund and program. That's all based upon how your financial dimensions are configured. And we've got a lot of great options for how you do that in the system. And then we click calculate balances. It then knows, look, you're done. Not only it walked me through doing it, uh, but I didn't have to watch a video. 
you read a guide and then go and do it separately. It walked me through. And when I was done, I had actually performed that task in the system. So now I could see the information I've said that I wanted to see. And just like earlier uh, on some of the drill downs that we saw where I'm seeing here, I'm seeing the balances again by fund program and account. But if I wanted to know more about this information, like where did this um, sewer maintenance cost come from? You know, I could drill down on that and give me more, more information behind it. I can see it was a cleaning services, you know, post holiday, you know, party cleanup. I could see the original transaction. I can go down and see the PO behind it, all that stuff, all by starting at the trial balance. And that's just a way of showing not only the trial balance and the general ledger functionality at a very quick high level, but also the usage of those task recorders. And then going into one of the most other commonly used functions, the idea of you know, from day to day, just accounts payable. Uh, that's always going to be a core component of the accounting system. And while we can start, excuse me, on the procurement and sourcing side with purchase requisitions, full workflows behind those that interface with your inventory uh, for, you know, we want to buy goods that will go into inventory, or we want to make requisitions out of inventory for warehouse to fulfill and bring to our department or our venue. <clears throat> that true request whether it's coming from inventory or needs a new purchase, uh, that with full automation and workflow capabilities, that then gets fulfilled with a you know, receipt and PO and all that kind of stuff to, to finalize. Out for purchasing agreements for things like uh, blanket purchase orders, contracts, all that stuff that, that has very robust procurement uh, functionality. But of course, the end of that is always going to be your invoice. If I go into and take a look at a vendor invoice entry workspace, it'll show me just how I have it set up for me right now, uh, a list of my open POs. So maybe I know what I'm expecting an invoice from, or I have an invoice for one of those. I can click on this and say invoice now, brings in all the information from that invoice and from the PO and receipt. So I'm just confirming that on the invoice, making the changes and sending that out. Or if maybe this was a PO that required a prepayment, you can do all that from here. Look at receipts that have not yet been invoiced, all that. But in this case, just for uh, for time's sake today, I'm just going to look at pending vendor invoices. Those that have been either integrated in the system through an automated standpoint or entered into the system but are waiting for final approval before being you know, posted and paid, can drill down on this one for Ladybug headquarters. You see that it's tied to purchase order 101. If there are multiple receipts to bring that in, but I want to see the details of this invoice, right? So when I open this up, I'm going to be able to see the the record inside the application but also because i did have a pdf to go with this obviously you see that these aren't necessarily tied to each other this is just an example invoice but that idea that you can i can hide this or show it that you know on the same screen really quickly when i'm looking at an invoice especially if i'm one that's approving this i can not only see the record inside the application but the corresponding invoice document to go with it uh, to help me make sure that I know where this came from, that it is valid, we're good to go, and I can approve this you know, for payment. So in this case, I'm just seeing the information on the left. I can see the POs that it came with. I can see the line items on this, you know, the total costs, and I can see that this passed the matching status. It matched to the PO, it matched to, to the receipt that had been done. So we're saying that it really should be ready to go because everything has matched. But it is telling me that, look, I don't have I don't have full budget passed here. And by that, I mean that um, you have different levels of, of your budget checking where you can say your things are allowed within a threshold. So with this symbol, it's telling me that it passed because it's within a threshold, but these would actually put me a little bit over budget. But I am authorized to, to go forward because of the thresholds in place. Uh, but all of that is configured based upon uh, your policies and how that works. But down below, I can also see on these you know, invoicing line items, uh, most of this would have come probably from the PO. But that idea of you know, were these related to a project? Which project and which line items, activities, categories was each line item of the invoice tied to? You know, what, is this a fixed asset? Yes or no? If it is, you know, we have rules that can automatically flag those. But yes, this is a new fixed asset of a type, you know, equipment, as an example. Or maybe no, this isn't a new fixed asset, but it is related to an existing one. You were buying parts for a vehicle, that sort of thing. We want to add these to the vehicle. Uh, so you can do all kinds of great information right from here. Again, I can hide that attachment to give me more room on here. 
the 1099s, see the financial dimension things behind here. And just to look at the financial dimensions that I have enabled in this organization, we've got our division, our fund, our program, but also the idea of unit. You can create all kinds of financial dimensions to only be used in certain circumstances for things like a unit. So if you have a housing unit or you have property rental type units and you want to track costs and revenues all associated with the unit, by creating a financial dimension that has a list of your, uh, of your units available, um, then in that any cost that maybe hits a supplies account or you know, a maintenance account, those sorts of things, where they can pick that unit, now you can start even getting some cost, you can start getting some pretty easy budget actuals based upon your units and your tenants and all that stuff. That's just an example of an additional financial dimension that it, you can easily create, then establish uh, rules around when it is used. And then all of that gives you great financial reporting capabilities off of that um, information. And last thing quickly for today, uh, while we're in here, just because it's a, it's a component that is used that a lot of folks are, are glad to use. It's that idea of, let me go back to my home screen, the budgeting and forecasting capabilities inside the system. So if I quick go to my budget planning, budget planning workspace, we can see at a high level as a budget plan administrator, maybe I'm setting up, well, what is our budget planning process truly? So in this case, I've built out our process where we first have to create our budget plans. Those budget plans we'll see in a minute, those are you know, what needs to be filled out, what requests are going to be filled out via the templates by your department managers or your the folks that are supplying their budgetary requests, right? And then the departments have to complete them by July, finance will review those by the end of August, leadership will review and approve those by the end of April, uh, by the beginning of September so that by 10-1 we have a full business plan ready for the for the current fiscal year. Just an example of what that looks like and you can track the status along the way. Those individual budget plans in this case I just have five simple ones in my demo environment but it's essentially a, a specific plan for what needs to be filled out by individual departments or divisions. So a great example might be IT or maybe you've got a golf course on property that needs their own that has their own budget that sort of thing or is filling out their own forecasts. But in this case, it's just a, my example here is a very simple, look, we're asking, we're telling our IT that by quarter, they need to give us, uh, they need to give us their, their budget requests by general ledger line item, right? A very simple thing that target, this was last year's budget, my example. So fill out your, your quarterly, uh, quarterly budgets by each of these and then submit that when you're, submit that when you're done. Pretty easy to understand, but oftentimes you want more robust options from that. So we, we have options to add things from uh, you know, bring in our fixed asset related budgets for the year, maybe new capital purchases, that sort of thing. And we want to add those in there. What is that going to look like? Our forecasts from our ongoing projects, demand forecasts for, for things based upon you know, what have we put in that we're expecting from a demand perspective or what has Microsoft AI kind of helped um, engineer for us in regards for you know, the goods that we're going to need to purchase to meet demand and supply, that sort of thing, especially from a you know, inventory warehouse perspective. All of this can come through in to help building out those budget plans to allow you to use that all within the system. And then that workflow to pass through who needs to view and approve those. And in the end, for all of it to come together into one final, one final budget planning process that creates maybe your starting operating budget for the year. Then it maintains a full budget ledger for you to be able to you know, make adjustments to the budget. Who approved that? Uh, what was the budget before and after? And then even report on your know, originating budget, revised budget, you know, adjusted budget, all that stuff throughout the application. It keeps those different scenarios to give you great budgeting. And then to bring in a lot of that same functionality for allowing folks to fill out forecasts using templates all within the system so you can combine the budget actual and forecast information for some great reports across the entire enterprise. So, so with that, that kind of ends our high level view of, of Dynamics 365 finance and supply chain management. And, and obviously we're a Microsoft partner. We've been implementing Microsoft for years and so we've drank a lot of that Microsoft Kool-Aid, we like to say. We really like it, but we know that you need more than just our opinions on it as well. And, and a recent independent 
analysis was done by Nucleus Research, and this is actually available as a handout in there. They were really looking at how ROI had been for customers that had implemented Dynamics 365 in recent years. And with that, they showed that uh, they delivered an, an average of almost $17 for every dollar spent, $17 of ROI and just about every dollar spent for companies that have really made great use of Dynamics 365. So while I'd like to talk and could talk about the technology for days, uh, I thank you for the time spent with us this morning. We've been excited for the great growth we've seen, especially in the, in, in the gaming side of things recently and the government side. Uh, we'd love the opportunity to talk with you more and uh, if you have any questions. Thanks again, appreciate the time and you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Great, thank you. Bye-bye.